What's up everybody? Today we are unpacking the concept of resonance. Put simply, resonance is really just how we make ourselves heard when singing. Now this is different from phonation. Phonation is the process by which the vocal folds make sound, but without resonance, that sound wouldn't really be very loud. So more specifically, resonance or resonation is the process by which a sound that a singer makes is enhanced in volume and tone by the spaces in the mouth and the throat. In order to unpack how resonance works, we need to understand how any instrument works at its core. Every instrument has a motor. That is something that provides the energy for the sound. In the example of a guitar, the motor is the hand. The hand, and probably the pick in the hand, is what strums the guitar and that provides the motion and the energy for the instrument to make sound. Then the instrument needs a vibrating element. In the case of the guitar, this element is obviously the strings. Once they are strummed or plucked by the motor, the strings vibrate and that makes sound, right? But anybody who has strummed an electric guitar that is not plugged in knows that it's not enough for the strings just to be plucked in order for the instrument to be heard. Unplugged, an electric guitar is pretty soft. That's because it doesn't have a resonating body. Every acoustic instrument needs a resonator in order to be heard. And in the case of an acoustic guitar, that resonator is the body of the instruments. Electric guitars are amplified electronically and that's how they're heard. For every acoustic instrument, there needs to be some sort of space that the sound can bounce off of in order to be amplified in volume. This is also true of the voice. In the case of the voice, the motor is actually the breath breath provided by the lungs. This airflow provides the energy which causes the vocal folds to vibrate. This diagram is of the vocal folds uh, kind of peering over from the top. You can see the two little rubber band like vocal folds right here and those are what come together and vibrate very very quickly to create sound but that sound is propelled by the breath energy or the motor of the instrument. The phonation or the sound that the vocal folds create is not really worth very much if it can't be heard. And in order to be heard, that sound has to reverberate off of different spaces in the body. The resonator for the voice is the space in the mouth and throat. You can see on this little image right here how much space we actually have within just the head area. We've got all of this space in the nasal cavity, there's all this space in the back of the throat, and then of course there's the space in the mouth. There are other resonating spaces in the body, but these are the ones that have the primary effect on the tone and the volume of the voice. Just for reference, if you had no head and your vocal folds were just exposed to the air and there was no resonating space on top of your neck, this is what your vocal folds would sound like. Pretty weird, right? Now those artificial vocal folds are much bigger than the vocal folds that we actually have. So that sound would actually be a lot smaller. And although it's creating a pitch, it's pretty void of any sort of tone. We really, really need the resonating spaces in our body and this principle of resonance to help us control how we want specifically the tone of the voice to sound. In the next lesson, we're gonna talk a little bit about tone and the shape of the vowels and all the things that make singing beautiful. Till next time, I'll see you later.